before the invasion uh, of the Falklands, have you had you ever sort of heard about it? I'd never heard of the Falklands, uh, and I, like many people, when we got uh, got to work that day, it's right, pack your kit, we're off to the Falklands. The Argentinians have invaded. A lot of people thought, oh, Scotland. What are the Argentinians doing in Scotland? And then, as we started to find out more and more what went on, and then you've got the newspaper reports coming back from the the, the guys who were down there who put up a heroic fight. Um, you know, who never surrendered. They, they were ordered to stop fighting. Uh, when we started to see in that, we knew it was real uh, and it was serious. Uh, what do you remember most about the conflict? Cold, wet, hungry, um, very, very tense at times. I think the thing that I take away from the conflict, from my point of view, is the chaos of how chaotic it was. Um, the lack of information uh, while we was down there for good reason. We were given very little information because if you were taken prisoner, you've got information that would be useful to the enemy. It was pretty horrific in and around San Carlos, the constant bombing. We were looking at between minus four or five, constant wind, always a wind. So sometimes that was really taking the temperature down. And then it's wet, so you get rain, sleet and snow all in the same day. What gave you strength in the most difficult moments? I think having your oppos around you, one, being able to rely on your oppos and your own physical fitness and, and the training that you have in the core. You know, the training's second to none. Looking after yourself, looking after your kit. You yeah, know. it's all sort of like click. That clicks, that gets you through. You know, it gets you through the worst, darkest moments. Because we, we'd all been trained to the same high standard. We were all really good friends. Uh, you know that the person in the trench to your left and your right are not going to let you down and you're not going to let them down. Uh, and while you are in, in control of the situation, you can, you can make things happen. Um, but when you lose control of the situation, when you can't do nothing about it, uh, it it's, it's, that's when the fear kicks in. The positivity and the belief that we would succeed was always in the people around me. Um, my team were great. I knew that we had great, great strengths and the chances were that in any kind of trouble, we'd be able to get out of it. What moments would you look back on fondly? Not killing people. Uh, I was in a clearance patrol, which I was leading on the water's edge. Uh, there were three of us, uh, and we noticed a, a craft coming towards us. I couldn't recognise the shape. It wasn't a Royal Marine craft, so we suspected it could possibly be enemy. We don't know. So we laid down uh, on the beach. Uh, we readied ourselves, and when the boat landed, we gave the uh, the, the, the very typical halt who goes there. They are supposed to stop what they're doing, wait for the password, return the password, and then carry an identifier as friendly. These people decided to jump on the ground and cock the weapons. Uh, so I, I popped a grenade, uh, pulled the pin out, uh, guy next to me did the same. And something said, just, just oh, hang on, just hang on a sec. And I did, the word, I did the command again, halt who goes there, and they came back saying friend. So when they stood up and went over, I'd give this guy an almighty uh, telling off. Uh, and he said, you can't speak to me like that, I'm Major so-and-so. I went, I'll speak to you any how I want when I've got a grenade in my hand like that. And he went, and I went, the pin's here. So they all scattered and they all left me. So being stood on a beach at night on my own in the pitch black, trying to put a pin back in a grenade, uh, it was quite a challenge. But because I made that pause, if, if I'd have thrown that grenade and the other grenade had gone as well, and we'd have taken out our own guys, uh, my life would have been completely different. So I look back on that moment and saw that like, one of the better decisions of my life. Did you have any idea what was going on in other ships or ashore, or was each ship in its own little world? I was lucky in my um, role, because I had comms with the other ships, so I knew what was going on. I knew the operators, most of them, on the other ships. I had a good idea of what was going on. We had a brief idea. I mean, there was some very sad sights down there. I was shoreside, not too far away from when uh, Antelope exploded. There is quite a, uh, a horrible picture of it exploding. Uh, we actually watched that with my own eyes and seeing guys jumping off the, the ship into the water to escape the flames. Uh, and then watching the ship break its back and sink uh, the next day. <laughs> It gets us now. You know, that's the sort of uh, effect it can have. Yeah, but you deal with it. Yeah. You know, you just, you just get on with it. But yeah, there's the casualties and then, you know, you, you're finding out who's died, people that, you know, mates who, who've lost. Yeah, that can get you. That's probably part of the why, you know, you, you, just, you just block it out later on in life. You just block it out, otherwise it can overwhelm you, the grief.
So what was it like, sort of like when the conflict finished and everything was over? Um, once it was all over, um, we got into Port Stanley. The place was a total and utter mess. The Argentinians had left it in an awful state. So we sort of helped the locals um, and everybody else start clearing up. But then we got back on board ship. I had my first shower, I think, in six weeks um, when we got back on board. Um, clean kit. And then shortly after that, uh, we sailed. And then it was literally four, four and a half weeks steaming back. Despite the war finishing in mid-June, we didn't arrive back until late August. Thank you.